What is good about Lorato Limited is the way that they calculate the movement in debtors. So yeah, please go and have a look at it because it's a it's a traditional trap that you all um, that most of you is going to step in with eyes wide open and make a mistake. So please go and have a look at trade and other receivables. Also, there's not a lot happening on non on, on non current assets. So please have a look at that. You don't have to draw all the tier counts, so you must be able to extract all the information that you need just by looking at the information that they gave you. And then, very important, please have a look at interest paid and interest expense and see what the difference is, how we treat it. When we treat it above the line, we're going to adjust our profit figure, so we're taking out our expense. But when we treat it under the line of cash generated of operations in the cash flow statement, then it's actually about the actual interest paid. So have a look at that. So important, which is different from other questions that you had. So focus on that if you don't focus on anything else. Ignore that. Um, they gave you the financial statements for the year ended 30 September 2014. The company maintains a gross profit percentage of 30% on sales. They give you extract of the statement of profit or loss, gross profit. Well, I have the gross profit percentage, so therefore I can work out revenue or sales. Dividend income, profit before finance cost and tax, finance cost, profit before tax, income tax expense and profit for the year. Then they also give you extract out of the statement of changes in equity. Only retained earnings for the two years. But in the retained earnings, you see profit for the year, 213912, 213912. A share issue costs, which is a cash um, outflow of cash, transfer to non-distributable reserves. They don't give us the particular of the reserve, but um, probably it can be our revaluation reserve. I don't know. But if you do a transfer to a reserve, it's in any case not an item which is uh, impact on your cash flow statement it is also under the profit before tax line so that will happen in the other comprehensive income section uh, ordinary dividends and preference dividends with a closing balance then the statement of financial position land buildings equipment vehicles and investments are oh, no change there for change then inventory, trade debtors, prepaid expenses, provisional tax. So my tax man opens here with a debit balance of 3220. And then at the end of the year, I owe him money of 6445. Cash and cash equivalents. Water share capital, brief share capital, non-distributable reserves. There's your 35,000 transfer that you've seen out of the income statement and retained earnings. 18% mortgage bond. Now, there is some movement which took place there. Trade creditors, interest payable, income tax payable, and shareholders for dividends, which will include dividend withholding tax. Now, what I want you to do is to prepare the statement of cash flow for the year in the 30 September 2014 by using the direct method in terms of IS7. The note regarding the reconciliation of profit before tax with cash generated by operations is not required. Great, so let's start in at the beginning, and the beginning is cash received from customers. Now, our first point here under additional information. Just want to see if I can scroll it back here. Trade debtors for the 2014 financial year include an allowance for credit losses that was created on 30 September 2014 at 4% of outstanding debtors. So what they tell you here is that this balance of trade debtors, the 67,675, is the net trade debtors as we're disclosing it in the statement of financial position, but included in that figure was the allowance for credit losses that we've deducted, and the allowance for credit losses equals 4% of outstanding debtors. Now, there was nothing more included in the trade debtors uh, figure because there we have prepaid expenses separately. So we can assume that that is really only debtors. And there they don't say trade in other receivables, they only say trade debtors. And here they tell you that it is net trade debtors. 
So guys, if that's 73,000 Rand, sorry, it's not 73,000 Rand. If that amount for trade is which was 67,675, 67, includes a deduction of 4% of trade debtors, which was our allowance account, what was the gross figure of trade debtors? That was then 74,95. Now that 74,95, that is the figure that we want to compare with this trade debtors of 73,600. So no longer do we compare the 67, 675. Why not? Because that does not represent debtors. And then this, um, I'm going to write here, 7495. That was the actual uh, uh, closing balance of our trade debtors. Now, how much was this allowance now? The allowance was equal then to an amount of 2820. Now, why is that important? What is our accounting entry when we pass an allowance for settlement discount? We debit the income statement, credit losses adjustment account or the credit losses account. So included in all these other expenses, this operating expenses that we have there, was this allowance for credit losses adjustment of 2020. Was it an expense or income item? Well, it's the first year that we actually created it because last year that was not the case. In the 2014 financial year, that was the first time and the only time that we have up till now created it. So that's the expense item. So it's also a non-cash flow item. So I must remember to rectify my profit before loss when I want to do that. Okay, so let's move then on to our cash received from our customers. And therefore, we need our revenue figure. And we said that our revenue figure is going to be 525,000 divided by 0.3, which is going to give us the total amount of sales revenue. 525 divided by 30% gives us 1750. Yeah, I've worked out our debt disclosing balance once more, 7495, and the, uh, the movement in debtors is then the 7495 less last year's balance of 73,600. 73,600. It was a decrease. You can see there a decrease in debtors. So a decrease in debtors represents a cash inflow. So therefore, no brackets there. Total cash received from customers, 1753105, 1753105. Second one is cash paid to suppliers and employees. Now there we know we're going to start with our profit before tax. That is our starting point. Profit before tax, and we have that figure of profit before tax, 297.100. Great, and before you forget that, immediately go and adjust it for the first non-cash flow item that you know of, and that was this allowance adjustment account 2820. Good, number two is all about preference shares that was issued. Number three, the following transactions with respect of non-current assets took place. So let's have a look at that. Land and buildings were sold for 260,000. So proceeds on the sale of land and buildings, go and dump it into your cash flow statement before you forget. You have the figure, why not go and use it there? Proceeds from the sale of land and buildings, cash flow from investing activities. Um, no further sales or purchases were made during the current financial year. Now, when I go back to our land and buildings, we see that there was a movement there. Our land and buildings have decreased with 265,000 rand. There was no, nothing else that took place except these land and buildings, which were sold for 260,000 rand. So, therefore, it is clear that we have made a loss on the sale of that buildings of 5,000 rand. So the 260,000, the movement was 265,000, so loss on the disposal of land was 5,000. Another non-cash flow item. 
So let's go and park our non-cash flow items in our calculation. Profit before tax 297.100. Non-cash flow items, the uh, adjustment for credit losses was an expense, so it actually decreased our profit before tax, therefore we're going to add it back. And then the loss and disposal of land was a loss, so it also decreased our profit before tax, so to eliminate that, we're going to add it back. Now, the above profits and losses on the sale of assets are already included in the profit before tax. No equipment was sold during the year. It's not to say that there wasn't equipment purchased during the year. You can clearly see here that there was an increase in our equipment figure of 40,000 Rand. Now, if nothing was sold, then it is very fair to say that that 40,000 was new equipment purchased. So when we go to our investment activities, equipment purchased, 40,000, there was nothing sold. So I think we can say for expansion purposes. Expansion purposes, 40,000 rand. Then, our accumulated depreciation increased here with an amount of 24,000 rand. Now, if there was no equipment sold, we didn't remove anything out of the accumulated depreciation account. We just added this year's depreciation, which is then 24,000 rand. Because that cost last year nothing, this year we have 180,000. So therefore, we have acquired 180,000 rand. We didn't have anything to replace, so therefore that must also be expansion. So vehicles purchased, 180,000. Can't be replacement. Never had it before, so in order to, to replace something, you should have had it before. That is then an outflow of cash of 180,000. Our accumulated depreciation vehicles, obviously there was nothing in the past. This year, at the end of the year, we sit with 30,000 Rand. So that 30,000 Rand there was our actual depreciation on vehicles for the year. So what is our total depreciation charge then? Our total depreciation charge is then 54,000 Rand. So let's go and add that back to our profit before tax. Um, depreciation, 54,000 Rand. Guys, you could have gone this way, then you would have started with profit before tax on the debit side, 297,100. There's my depreciation, there's our credit losses adjustment, there's the loss on the disposal of land. We have to take out revenue. Why? Because we're working with expenses and we've already, in any case, used revenue when we worked with cash received from customers. So our total revenue for the year was, as we've seen there, 1750000 so we must still take that one out. Then separately disclosable items in our income statement. Um, statement of changes in equity, yeah. Dividend income, it increased profit, so we're going to subtract it in from profit before tax. And finance cost of 59550 it was an expense, so we have to add it back to our profit for the year. So therefore, dividends received, we're going to subtract that from 297,100 and the finance cost we're going to add to the 297,100. And then we are going to get our total expenses, 1333,130, this base, 1333,130, and now we're going to adjust that for the accrual principle. Where do we go to for the accrual principle? Well, the first thing is going to be in our statement of financial position. Here we have inventory. Inventory has actually increased with a total of 7,400 Rand. An increase of inventory is an outflow of cash. So increase in inventory, outflow of cash. Guys, I cannot stress it enough that your brackets is very important. If you do not indicate the correct brackets, either in or out of brackets, you are not going to receive any marks for your attempt. Trade it is, is in any case nothing to do with expenses, provisional tax equals our oh, prepaid expenses. That is very much expenses. And our prepaid expenses has actually increased during the year with 170 Rand. So we have prepaid more expenses. Um, so that also represent a cash outflow. 
173 rand. Good. Uh, coming to our current liabilities, trade creditors. Now, trade creditors, there's quite a reduction of trade creditors from 71,250 to 48,170. So it's a decrease of 23,075. Like and a decrease in creditors means then also an outflow of cash of 23,075. And now we can complete that and we are going to say our cash paid to suppliers and employees 1363775. And we're going to park that 1363775. Cash generated from operations is then the difference between the two 389330. We are not required to do the reconciliation note, but if we had to do the reconciliation note, what is the difference in the reconciliation note? opposed to our calculation of cash pay to supplies and employees. We're also going to start with um, profit before tax. We're going to adjust it for all the non-cash flow items, depreciation, credit losses, written um, allowance for credit losses, loss on disposal of the assets, and we're going to adjust it still for separately disclosable items, finance costs and dividends received, we would not have taken out revenue. Why not? Because we're working with a third line and revenue is included in the first line. And we would have added to our movement in working capital our increase, our decrease, our decrease in debtors of 3105. So the only difference is that we would not have taken out revenue and we would have added the movement in debtors. Good. Then uh, the next item is our interest paid. Now um, let's do dividend income first. Dividend income, straightforward, there's nothing funny about dividend income. It's also equal to the 1,600 rand. Now interest. In our income statement, oh, in our, in our um, statement of financial position, we have interest payable of 10,000 at the end of this year and 50,000 at the beginning of the year. So although we have in our income statement an expense of 59,550, that was not the actual amount which we've paid during the year. So therefore you have to go and work out how much was the actual amount paid. Interest payable had an opening balance of 50,000. It had a closing balance of 10,000. It had an income statement expense item of 59,550. And therefore, when we do the T account, we can establish that we actually paid interest for the year to the amount of 99,550. So here on the face, interest paid equals 99,550. Why did we only take out 59,550 when we did this adjustment entry? Guys, now listen to me carefully. I had so many questions and it's clear to me that you don't really understand what you're doing here. What do I do? I adjust profit before tax. So the items that I'm going to take out or add back in this calculation, it's got everything to do which was originally included in profit before tax. Now, in profit before tax, finance costs of 59,550 was included. There we see, profit for the year. After we have deducted 59,550. So the amount that we can adjust here can only be the amount which was included in that amount of 297,100. However, when we get to the actual interest paid, now it's all about the actual cash flow which took place. Remember, what did we do there? In this calculation, we converted our expenses figure into a cash figure. And we eliminated finance costs altogether, completely. And here, so it's not there. It's a reconcilable item between profit before tax 
and our um, cash generated out of operations because it's included in profit before tax it's not included in cash generated from operations but yeah it's all about what did we actually pay and therefore we're going to include there the 99.55 so please have a look at that don't be caught that um, with something like that and please understand why it is like that our tax we had a debit balance in the beginning of the year of 3220 we had a credit balance at the end of the year of 6445 and we had an income tax expense of 83188 so opening balance debit 3220 Closing balance is a credit balance, so we bring it over above the line on the debit side, 6445. Here's our income tax charge for the year, 83188. What's our entry year? We debit the expense account, which is the income statement account, and we credit SARS, 83188. Now, the balancing figure then equals the actual amount paid to SARS for the year for income tax, 73523, which is that one. Dividends paid. We had outstanding shareholders for dividends, both at the end of last year as well as this year. So shareholders for dividends will have an opening balance of 62,500 and it will have a closing balance of 75,000 and they give us an extract of the statement of changes in equity. So there was ordinary dividends paid as well as preference dividends. So the sum total of all dividends declared for the year was 125,000 rand. You have to take both of them. Shareholders for dividends, opening balance 62,500, closing balance 75,000, total dividends 125,000. So that will give us then, as a balancing figure, the amount that we paid the shareholders for the year 112,500. 112,500. So cash flow from operating activities, so now those together, that will give us then the 105,357. Cash flow from investing activities, we've done them all. All we can do is we can add them up, this net cash inflow of 40,000. Cash flow from financing activities. Now in our additional information, they told us something about financing activities. They said during the year, 250,000 preference shares were issued at 55, 55 cents per share. So 250,000 multiplied by 55 cents a share gives us a sum total of 137,500. So proceeds from the issue of preference shares, 137,500. And then they said um, that there was also share issue costs of 1150 those share issue costs we have to account separately for it's a cash outflow so share issue costs 1150 when we look at the mortgage bond um, there's nothing that they actually gave, gave us on the mortgage bond and we can then assume that the difference in the balance there from the 575 to the 372 represents a repayment of our mortgage loan and that was 203732. So net cash outflow out of financing activity 67382. Now cash and cash equivalents, that's the easy one. Beginning of the year 42,000 increased quite significantly to 120125, so there's an increase of 77,975. So to check, 105,357 plus 40,000 less 67,382 will bring us back to this movement of 77,975.